Welcome to my lecture online. What we're going to do now is come full circle and compare this, the probability of a certain event happening. In this case, for example, when we have, let's say, six molecules on one side of the box, what's the probability for all of them to then be distributed throughout the entire box or going from them being distributed in the entire box and then finding that they're all on one side of the box? What is the probability going from one to the other side and from this other side back to one. Well, not side, but situation, for example, from being on one side only to everywhere in the box or being everywhere in the box to just on one side only. And we're going to compare that to what we talked about before, microstates and microstates. So you'll see that there's a very strong connection between the two. But first of all, you need to see this. This is really interesting. At least when I saw that, I thought, wow, this is quite amazing. So again, the probability that we go from a smaller volume to a larger volume or a larger volume to a smaller volume that is equal to the ratio of the volumes to the nth power where n is the number of molecules involved. So in this case we're going to be dealing with n equals 6, 6 molecules. And so let's say that we have 6 molecules on one side of the box. What is the probability for them to then be distributed throughout the entire box? And so when you then take a look at the probability we take the ratio of the volumes, so in this case, V1 is the whole box, V2 is the half box, I might as well just go ahead and write that on there, so V1 is the full box and then V2 is just the half a box, so that ratio is a 2 to 1 ratio. With 6 molecules, 2 to 1 to the 6th power is 64. Now, if we take the natural log of 64, we get 4.158883, at least with 6 decimal places. Now let's go the other direction. We have a situation where we go from a larger volume, V1, into a smaller volume, V2. V2 is just half of V1. Now notice, that means that the probability of that occurring is V2 over V1 to the n power, or 1 half to the 6th power, which is 1 over 64. It's kind of the inverse of probability. And if we now take the natural log of 1 over 64, we get the very same number, but with a negative sign in front of it. Wow, that is quite amazing, because essentially the change in entropy has to be the same way in both directions. One should be positive, the other one should be negative, but the change in entropy should not change, at least the magnitude of that entropy change. And you can clearly see that that will not be the case, because as we will see in the next video, or we saw in the previous video, I might as well write it, oh, my circle is still there. Guess what that circle is there for? We use the circle to zero in and make sure that the picture is nice and sharp before we start shooting. I forgot to raise the, the, the nice little circle. But anyway, so we have... It's an ellipse. It's not a circle. Well, close enough. I know it kind of looks like an ellipse, but it's almost a circle. <laughs> there we go. So the change in entropy is equal to K times N times the natural log of the ratio of V2 over V1 or V1 over V2. So notice that this quantity right here, depending upon which way it goes, is it V2 over V1 or V1 over V2? This, if the ratios are the same, in other words, is one is double the other side, and we reverse the order, that will always give us the same number, but with a positive or a negative sign, a change in the entropy. And then we multiply that times the number of molecules times k. k is a constant, n is the number of molecules. If that's the same, you can see how the entropy change is the exact same magnitude, but simply opposite in sign. And that, what, that is clearly shown in this example right here. When I saw that, I thought, that's pretty neat. I have to show you that because it does help us understand it. And then we'll go back and circle, go full circle and compare that again to the way in which we set up the macrostates and the microstates. Now, I should do one more thing. I should calculate the change in entropy for this example because then we're going to show you the table. You're going to wonder, well, how does this number relate to the numbers in the table of the macrostates and microstates that we're then going to go to? So again, we're going to use this equation. So K is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23, and that would be joules over Kelvin. The number of molecules will be 6, and then the natural log of, well, let's go the natural log, the natural log of 1 half. And so that means we're going to go from, a, from having a 
more disordered state to more ordered states that should give us a negative entropy change. So we take 0.5, take the natural log of that, times 6 times 1.38 e to the 23 minus equals, oh, what happened? Got to do it again. 0.5, take the natural log of that, times 6 and times 1.38 e to the 23 minus equals, and there it is, that gives us an entropy change of minus 5 point, essentially 5.74 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So let's remember that number when we go to the next video, because then we're going to compare that. But at least you can see that it works one way or the other. Now, if we, of course, go from uh, this situation right here, uh, no, from this situation to this situation, which is from a more ordered state to a less ordered state, we will then get a positive 5.74 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. And that is how it's done.